Welcome to MC Test Design. Today we will be talking about our probes. As you could see on my table there is a probe garden. There are eight different probes that represent our products. Let's uh, first define what is common for all of them. The main feature of all these probes is that those probes are isotropic. It means that each probe has three internal antennas positioned orthogonal to each other. This way we can produce isotropic field strength reading that is independent on orientation of the probe with respect to field. The output of each probe is DC voltage proportional to RMS value of the field. Those probes measure thermal effects of RF fields. This way most safety standards are written. Because output of each probe is DC voltage, probes require a special meter. Meter, in essence, is a non-linear voltmeter that operates from microvolts to volts with approximately 120 dB dynamic range. And also those meters are capable of memorizing this non-linearity factors to be able to display correctly field strengths either in field units or power units. For example, one of these meters, RFP-04, can operate only with one probe because it can be calibrated only with one probe, while RFP-05 can operate and memorize up to four different probes. On this, on this screen you could see the chart that represents all probes made by our company. As you can see, they cover frequency range from 100 kHz to 40 GHz. There is a good question. Why don't we make one probe that covers all ranges? The answer is actually very simple. When the frequency of your signal is known, such probe may be actually a very good and simple solution for many problems. But unfortunately, frequency of the signal sometimes is not known. And it is frequency response of the probe that identifies which signal is being measured. Let's take a look at our probes. The probes in the front row are broadband probes from lower frequency to highest frequency. And they represent designs where frequency response is practically flat, defined by probe specification. Two middle probes in rear row, they have uh, limited bandwidth and they represent example of probes for selective measurements. This one with a black cup measures magnetic fields and this last one is a very special probe, it's active probe and it's designed to measure pulse fields. Let's talk about probe PI-01. On this screen you can see that it covers frequency range from 200 kHz to 3 GHz and field from 0.2 to 600 volts per meter. It meets the requirements of present EMC and RF safety standards and it allows measurements of RF fields produced by most of the broadcast, telecommunication and industrial sources. High sensitivity and stability of the parameters ensures a long-term field life. As you can see on the same screen, this probe can operate with both types of meters. Let's look at the probe PI-01E. This is isotropic broadband electric field probe operating from 100 kHz to 6 GHz and field strength levels between 0.3 to 600 volts per meter. This state-of-the-art probe meets the requirements of new EMC and RF safety standards. It allows measurements of RF fields produced by most of the broadcast, telecommunication and industrial sources. This eliminates the need for two probes to cover the required frequency range from 100 kHz to 6 GHz, thus making measurements simpler and faster. Let's talk about our most popular probe, PI-03. PI-03 is isotropic broadband electric field probe. It operates from 3 MHz to 18 GHz and field strength levels between 0.8 to 800 volts per meter. 
This probe allows you measurements of much higher fields. It has classic design, meets the requirements of most EMC and RF safety standards for industrial, military and radar communication applications. High overload limit and stability of the parameters make this probe a versatile measuring tool for all use cases. Now I have in my hand our latest state-of-the-art probe, PI-05. PI-05 is isotropic, ultra-broadband electric field probe. It operates from 1 MHz to 40 GHz and field strengths range 2 to 1000 volts per meter. This is a modern probe that extends the requirements of most EMC and RF safety standards for industrial, military and radar communication applications. High overload field strength limit and operation up to 40 GHz makes this probe a versatile measuring tool for all applications including the microwave K-band. This probe can operate only with meter RFP05. Now let me introduce our probe PI-01C. PI-01C is isotropic selective electric field probe and it operates from 500 MHz to 2000 MHz and field strength levels between 0.5 to 600 volts per meter. Electric field probe PI-01C was designed for selective RF measurements the ability to attenuate the signals above 3 GHz and reject signals below 300 MHz makes it an invaluable tool for cell phone tower certification. And this probe can operate with both types of our meters. Now let me introduce probe PI-01V. PI-01V this dual band probe was designed for selective RF measurements in a frequency range between 900 to 1900 MHz and field strength levels between 0.2 to 400 volts per meter. The ability to select only specified frequency bands and reject all the rest makes it an invaluable tool for cell phone tower certification. It can operate with both types of meters. Now let me introduce our magnetic field probe, PIH-1. PIH-1 is isotropic magnetic field probe operating between 500 kHz to 50 MHz and field levels 0.05 to 20 A ampere per meter. This probe is used for assessment of the limits for maximum permissible exposure of occupational and general population to RF magnetic fields. This probe covers the frequencies of major industrial broadcast and telecommunication sources, has flat response as a pass band from 2 to 50 MHz, usable response to 500 kHz, thus eliminating needs for two probes. It is very compact rugged and offers good magnetic field overall capability and pick up suppression of the out-of-band electric and magnetic fields. It can operate only with RFP05 meter. Someone may ask a question, why don't we have a magnetic field probe operating above 50 MHz? This slide gives you an answer. It represents impedance of the field, impedance is a ratio E over H, for two different sources. Red line is E source, basically a field produced by dipole, and blue line is H source, field produced by loop. You could see that at small distances to source, there is a vast difference between impedances. But once you go above approximately 1 over 2 pi of the wavelengths, these both impedances converge to the same value that is 377 ohm. It means if you measure fields at a distance slightly larger than 
1 over 2 pi of the wave for ns, you could, could assume that ratio of the electric to magnetic fields is strictly 377 ohm. And you don't have to measure H component, you can measure E component and just calculate H component by dividing in by 377 ohm. For example, for 300 megahertz, wavelength is 1 meter and the required distance above which you have far field conditions is only 0.15 meter. So for all practical purposes, there is no need of high frequency magnetic field probe. It is enough to have electric field probe and measure H fields only at low frequencies, what we implemented in PIH1 probe. Last but not least is our impulse electric field probe PIO3P. This is isotropic pulsed electric field probe. It operates from 100 MHz to 18 GHz and it measures field strengths between 70 to 1400 volts per meter. This broadband isotropic electric field probe measures pulsed RF fields produced by the microwave radars. It has very fast sampling capability for the probe, measuring the field strengths of RF bursts, pulses, as short as one microsecond. It operates in the frequency range that covers the test requirements of military STD-461 and automotive EMC GM and Ford specifications. This probe consists of two elements. One is probe by itself and second one is power unit. This power unit has electronics built into it and rechargeable battery that allows this probe to operate independently of the meter and allow it a long operation in a field and proper signal processing to capture very short up to as small as one microsecond RF bursts. This slide explains the difference between probe PIO3P and all other conventional probes. For steady state fields there is no difference. All probes both show RMS value of the field. In this case you could see RF field with RMS value 10 volts per meter and peak value 14 volts per meter. Because this probe is calibrated to show RMS value same way as any other probe, all probes should demonstrate the reading of 10 volts per meter. At the same time, you could see at the bottom, for radar pulses, RF bursts, there is a huge difference. In this case, I demonstrate example of the signal where duration of the burst is only one microsecond and the pause between bursts is between 1 to 100 milliseconds. In this case you could see that conventional probe calibrated by RMS value will show something like zero and this probe will still show RMS value of the RF burst by itself that is 10 volts per meter. This is a fundamental difference between this probe and typical RMS probe. Now there is more and more data demonstrating that not only thermal effects are harmful for humans, but also pulsed electric and magnetic fields are harmful for humans. Therefore having probes that allow you the measurements of the RMS and peak value of the pulses becomes very important for correct assessment of health risks. All probes are calibrated in our EMC test lab and they come with calibration certificate traceable to United Kingdom National Physical Lab that allows you to use them and produce accurate RF field strength measurements. Thank you for watching EMC TV channel.